let's go. <laughs> hey, I'm Jesse. I'm here with Juan. Juan, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Juan's evolution at Replit, with Replit, however you want to say. Uh, Juan is one of our top bounty hunters, and it's just someone we wanted to highlight who's been an excellent example of some of our favorite creators on Replit. Because uh, Replit is someone, is a place where we we want people to build great software. It's a place where we prize simplicity, but we also prize, uh, you know, power. So it's like, how can you do something that's uh, complex, but when a user uses it, it's, uh, you know, something like in the IDE uh, or doing a bounty. We want there to be as little friction as possible. Uh, so I guess to get a little bit more of your background, we could start out with, uh, where you came from in terms of uh, how you learned how to code in the first place. Yeah. So how I learned to code in the first place, it all started with, um, I think like I wanted to just learn how to build things. That was yeah. like the primary motivation. And Were you a Lego kid? I was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. I was a, a Lego kid. Um, I was like a big Apple fan. Um, still am, but... Um, like Fuji or Honeycrisp or I'm just <laughs> um, <laughs> no what was your first um, was it like a, an app or was it more a Mac like a computer um, it was a phone yeah so like when the iPhone came out I remember it was like the iPhone when like Siri came out and all that stuff mm. that's when I, I was like wow um, and my first phone i probably it was probably like in middle school yeah and i was instantly like hooked with like apple and technology and stuff like that that was like the primary inspiration i didn't learn how to code un up until like like tail end of high school yeah where i really you know when i started to think like uh what i wanted to do like as a career hmm. um um i just really because that's a huge choice for a, essentially like a, a a pretty young person to make right sure. like there's so much did you have um much pressure on you to make a, a choice th at that age or was it more within where you're like i need to figure out what i want to do with my life uh wh which was it no i don't i don't think it was like a lot of pressure but um you know it was like how could i explain it i guess You took it seriously? Yeah, I took it seriously. Like, college wasn't too interesting, honestly. Yeah. Um, like, the traditional past w w wasn't too interested. Um, high school wasn't too interesting as well. It was, I, I've always just loved, like, like doing something. Like, yeah. doing something myself, you know. Yeah. It's something that, I think that was, like, the spark. And just, like, combining that with technology, it was just, like, the perfect match. And that's when I got hooked. Um so that's that was like the initial inspiration to learn how to code. Um, I remember like first first lines of code were like on Free Code Camp. Nice. Free Code Camp. JavaScript. HTML, uh, HTML CSS, JavaScript. Nice. And um, yeah, those were like the first lines of code. Cool. And then if you guys hear that in the background, we we are in uh, your your uh, it's not your hometown. It's your uh, where you're living now and uh, near Phoenix. Phoenix. And we are in the wild. Yeah. We, are, we are building in the public yeah. in, or in the wilderness. <laughs> uh, but uh, but that's so cool. Uh, did you connect with any subjects early on? Like, were you traditionally or in class good at math or? Uh... Um, no, not really. Uh, like, I remember, like, probably the most interesting classes were, like, statistics and, like, the more practical ones. Mm. Um, but uh, I didn't really connect with math and, like, the hard sciences, like, early on. Mm. It was probably, like, after I learned how to code where that's, those things got a little bit more interesting because um, they're, like, more applicable, I think. Yeah. But from like a pure theor theoretical perspective um didn't really like catch my eye i never took statistics i've heard 
it's one of the hardest courses you could take. So like to connect with that is, uh, it's not saying you're bad at math. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because to have that curiosity is like, uh, I think it's pretty hard or rare, uh, especially uh, as someone who didn't go to university. That seems uh, that seems like you might be a bit of an outlier there to like not see the value in higher education, but to connect with something as I don't know, kind of esoteric as statistics. Right. Uh, and it does. Um, I guess we could skip ahead a little bit because statistics has a lot. Is is a pretty nice segue into your current work, which is uh, you're you're trying to start an AI based company. Right. For what, sure. So, uh, if you could give us a little bit of, um, I guess, what's the what's the name, and then what's uh, what's a, what's the short elevator pitch? For sure. So, uh, it's crear dot AI. Uh, you want to spell that? So it's C R E A R dot AI. Cool. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a Spanish. Oh, nice. So quick, uh, like background on that name. It was my co-founder who initially named it like that, hmm. and um, we were initially targeting targeting like Latin America. Cool. So that's why the name is in Spanish, but yes. uh, we decided to just like roll with it. Um, so Crear.ai basically um, is uh, your all-in-one content creator assistant. So we want to empower every uh, writer in the world. So we're launching with, um, you're able to compose text. Mm -hmm. um, so you can write blog posts, short stories, essays, um, so on and so forth. You can transform text so you can rephrase it, summarize it, expand it and really like mold your text. And finally respond, so you can respond to messages, WhatsApp, Slack, emails. Um, nice. And that's what we're initially launching with. Very cool. What have you, um, do you have any users yet? Uh, we have not launched yet. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, So we're gonna be launching very soon. The product is almost ready. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm trying to get this guy scheduled. And he's a very focused, busy man. Uh, but I'll, I'll uh, give you some gratitude for uh, giving uh, us some time. Thank you. Uh, and uh, to transition back a little bit to your your history, uh, going beyond uh, or before uh, high school, uh, growing up, like before you you had an iPhone. Uh, let's. Who were you when you were building Legos? Uh, were you a pretty curious kid were you getting in trouble at all uh did you uh uh did you like uh were your parents uh a fan of technology or did they uh not want you did they not want you watching tv or uh what, what was that the the what was the genesis of, of you so i would say i think i would say i was a bit of a troll maker in school same yeah <laughs> Yeah, got suspended a couple times. Um, got like devices taken away at school all the time. See, I didn't have that problem. I, my computer was always at home. Like I'm, I'm 10 years or something older than you, but uh, yeah, definitely got suspended for uh, other things, other mischievous right. stuff. <laughs> but uh, if I had a laptop or a smartphone in high school, I would it would have been way faster. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, those were some dark times, <laughs> but, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I was in like the typical, like a student. Um, yeah, it's just like, always getting trouble, like playing around with friends and like, yeah. just like, um, stuff like that. I think one of the things I've, I've learned about technologists in general, like, uh, I don't know if you've read zero to one, right. uh, but they they talk about all their all the people in the the PayPal mafia had uh, a record, <laughs> whether it was like, like a record, building like a... pipe 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 bombs or like, oh I see like doing some kind of thing with explosives right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a uh, it's that hacker I think it's that hacker spirit of wanting to see how malleable the rules are mm -hmm. and, and realizing that the rules uh, are sometimes there to be broken. Uh, you know, especially with literal hackers or like um, uh, white hat or great hat hackers, uh, their that's their their whole livelihood is built around penetration testing. Or, right. uh, uh, but 
as a kid, uh, it's interesting to, to connect that with, uh, getting in trouble at school. Cause yeah. Yeah. I remember, um, specifically like in fifth grade, um, I had this little like side hustle where I built uh, duct tape wallets, <laughs> nice. They're, like wallets made out of duct tape, yeah. duct tape, and I um, it was like a little business. It's only like for five dollars, nice. and I I made them in class. That's like, cool. Behind a desk. It's child labor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think those were like the earliest like experiences, in um, like hackerish. Nice. Yeah. And entrepreneurship. Yeah. Like, um, that's the other thing. It's like when you're starting a company, it's, uh, it's, you know, if you look at the Y Combinator stuff, which, uh, you know, Replit is involved with that, that school of thought is, uh, the entrepreneurial stuff. It, it's technically not as hard as the actual building of the, of a product or service. Uh, but to have those roots is, uh, is really interesting. I was, I wasn't a kid building lemonade stands or anything like that, so I don't really have a mind for it. But the uh, the uh, entrepreneurial uh, starting of you is that's a it's a cool story. Did you uh, what like? I guess that's a good segue back into uh, you know your current side hustle, which is uh, you're one of the top, if not the top, bounty hunter on Replit bounties. Uh, how did you hear about that product and what drew you to it? Oof. It's hard to recall exactly the moment that yeah. I heard about it, but it was something along the lines of like Twitter or just like spending time on the platform on, on Replit and just like, just like bounties like appear there yeah. and just like checking them out. Um, so it's hard to recall that exact moment, but I, I feel like bounties can't be more than six months old. Yeah, it's early. Yeah, yeah it's early. No. But you've made uh I don't I think what you've made is somewhat public, right? Is uh I forget if our bounties profile that we're implementing or the reputation system mm-hmm. says your earnings or not, but uh if if they are, we'll put them on the uh we'll put them in the edit. <laughs> Cuz uh there's some serious money to be made in software, of course, mm-hmm. but on the platform specifically and it being so new there is a um it's like a um i don't want to sound too much like a salesman but what is it it's like uh this manifest destiny of like stake your claim build your reputation Mm -hmm. uh, make a name for yourself do high quality work make relationships with people for sure Uh, uh, but i guess to answer the second half half of that question or uh, to ask that second half of the question again what was the uh what was the thing that drew you to it? I think um, I can think of two things off of the top of my head. One was um, sort of bounties is sort of already integrated into Replit, and I was, since I was like super familiar with the Replit ID and everything, yeah. um, that was kind of like oh, I, it's like an all-in-one thing where you know I could um, get these like side projects and then just yeah. build them on Replit and get paid there is super cool just low friction low friction uh the second thing i think was since since the like the bounty marketplace was so early yeah establishing a reputation was uh, a little bit easier than say something like fiber or something like that Mm. um and not to mention like the projects there were way more interesting Mm. way more interesting um i know like replits uh very involved in like the whole AI thing yeah. and so there was like a whole bunch of AI projects which uh, I had experience with and so that really like drew me there as well like if you take a look at uh, other projects on like Upwork or, or Fiverr or some other freelancing websites like just like some boring projects yeah did you have experience on either of those platforms I did not oh. nice that's really cool because I think you know as we go forward it's going to be interesting to see whether we're able to get people to migrate or if the the growth of bounty hunters specifically just is organic from um, you know people who grew up on the platform because uh, you know a lot of our user base tends to be younger but as the tool gets more powerful uh, we have uh, you know more and more 
established professional developers uh, asking for very complicated things, right? We see, um, I don't know if you, uh, did you apply for, uh, was it the the ex GitHub CEO, Nat, what's his name, Nat? Oh, Nat Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Did you apply for his? I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did go to somebody else? Yeah. So it's, that's interesting. Um, so I did, so I, I did apply and I did hear back from Nat. Yeah. Um, and we went back and forth. He kind of like interviewed me, nice. uh, asked like, like a whole bunch of questions on, yeah. on like how I would do, how I would go about uh, implementing X feature, Y yeah. feature. Um, Can, uh, just for people who haven't heard of that bounty, it was a big deal for us because uh, Matt Friedman, is, you know, there's a lot of parallels between uh, Replit and GitHub in terms of what we're trying to offer users. Uh, but having one of your co, uh, one of uh, having a co-founder of uh, a competitor in some ways come to your platform because it's something that hasn't been addressed uh, by their old job. Uh, is is fascinating, and uh, do you want to tell th um, the audience, I guess, what the the bounty was? Yeah. So basically, um, as far as I remember, it was like um, so. If people are familiar with like the OpenAI Playground mm. online, uh, where you can like prompt different models, mm -hmm. test different uh, configurations, um, and really just like it's a playground for the for for models, but it. That models like um, uh, uh, AI models. So yeah. for OpenAI, it's specifically those models like GPT three, um, now three point five and and four, and you know there there are various other uh, ones. And what Nat wanted to do or uh, is doing is um, that, but for local models. Mm. So taking it off uh, OpenAI and then bringing it to uh, models that you can run locally on your computer. Interesting. Um, so you can take models from like Hugging Face or uh, you know just different models that you can run locally and basically take that offline. And it's almost like um, these models have different flavors to them, right? They're trained on different data sets. They they will output different things. Like um, there's a um, you know, with the chat GPT, a lot of people mess with, uh, you know, Dan, do anything now. The, uh, it's a, uh, I guess it's, it's, what do they call it? Prompt injection? Where like you do something, you prompt it with something to make the AI model output something that it wasn't supposed to output. Uh, like uh, prompt engineering? Prompt engineering. Well, I guess it's like, it's a subset of prompt en engineering. It's like- Prompt uh, injections? Prompt, in yeah, that might be it. Uh. So it's a, uh, it's kind of like instead of trying to subvert the the model, you could just have a whole um, cat a whole list of different models you could try with different inputs and getting different outputs instead of having to do the the, the weird prompt injection. Right. Uh, and now a message from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. Uh, Juan, if you wanted to ask Amjad anything, what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, give me a second to think about that, Dan. Because I actually have them right here. Okay, I see. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that around. <laughs> All right, so let, let's, let's play with Amjad. Okay. Let's see. I already asked him what's the worst part of life, <laughs> and he Amjad Bot uh, says the worst part of life is the fear of the unknown. We often worry about what we could go, what could go wrong, and what the worst case scenario might be. But it's important to remember that the worst case scenario is rarely as bad as we think it is, and we could usually find a way to cope with ever, with, with whatever comes our way. Oh yeah, so that might be. 
I don't know. I also, I don't know if I asked him the meaning of life, but, uh, <laughs> I was going to, um, when he thinks AGI will have him. When will AGI have him? <laughs> An error occurred unauthorized. That's classified data. Actually, I think I just need to refresh the page. Because <laughs> Amjad, uh, that's, we actually have, uh, Ghost Rider has reached sentience. We just haven't released it. <laughs> Always has to be on a demo. It's not a live demo, though. So we, the, the demo gods should not smite us. All right, we're getting somewhere. Aha! I asked him what's the difference between AI and AGI. Mm. You want to hear the answer? It's pretty long. Let's see, artificial intelligence is a broad term that refuse that refers to machines that can per perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. Artificial general intelligence is a subset of AI that refers to machines that can think and reasons like humans. AI is focused on specific tasks, while AGI is focused on general intelligence. Uh, AI is typically used for automation and optimization, where while AGI is used for more complex tasks, uh, such as problem solving and decision making. You have any quibbles there? Seems like I'm just. <laughs> I mean, um, it's it's really cool. I, I I think I see how they built that, and um, it's really cool how you can like imitate a person. Yeah. So, what do you, do you know what what he said about that? But this, this I, I can't ask I don't I, I know it's trained on all his blog posts oh, okay and I think it's Langchain yeah it's using Langchain uh, and I think we have like um, it was Connor who built it so we have like this um, all his blog posts and then maybe some inter internal stuff no it's transcriptions of podcasts. Oh, I see. So I that's see. how like we get stuff that he hasn't exactly written about, because oh, Connor went back and just found podcast transcriptions. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I'd agree with the general argument. Yeah. Uh, you got any more for uh, the boss? Um, when will Replit take over the world? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It knows our mission. I mean, Amjad knows our mission. He says, I don't think Replit will ever take over the world, but we are committed to making programming more accessible and empowering uh, to people to create amazing things. We believe that everyone should be should have the opportunity, opportunity to learn how to code and use technology to make a positive impact on the world. Also known as reaching a billion software developers. Or creating. Both. Same creators. Thing. But you also, I forgot your other question. It was, uh, what was it? Your, your question before the last two. Something about AGI. Uh, oh, yeah, when will AGI happen? Right, yeah. Oh. Let's see if you disagree with this. AGI is still in its early stages of development, so it's hard to predict... When it will become a reality, we are making progress in the field of AI, but there's still a lot of work to be done before AGI can be achieved. What's your What's your timeline? Can you give a timeline? I can't. Um, and it's just hard. It's just hard. But I will say that um, the progress is insane. It is insane. Um, the rate of progress is insane. So. Um, like at the time of recording this, um, GPT 3.5 was just released like two, three weeks ago. And now we have four. Yeah. It's insane. And what's, do you know any of the stats on, um, what is it? The, uh, the number of parameters of either of those? Uh, no. Um, I know like on Twitter, like there's this whole rumor of like, it was going to have like, I can't remember how many parameters, but. I don't think it's as nearly as like people think, hmm. um, but off of the top of my head, I, I, have, I haven't seen it. Interesting. The number. 
do you think there is a a path to AGI that is just scaling the current AGI the, the current AI tool set? Do you think that's the most fruitful path? That's an interesting question. I, I mean I think we I, I, th I think we'll get to a really good point uh, yeah. uh, um, in terms of what you just mentioned in terms of like actually unlocking AGI my opinion is that it's a more like philosophical question of like mm -hmm. um, we first have to figure out like human conscientiousness first basically yeah, yeah uh, I think to, to get to AGI without being able to understand or create uh uh, I guess you first have to understand to create consciousness, but I, I I'd agree with you. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that's that's getting uh, way too esoteric. Let's get back into brass tacks and talk about uh, building on Replit. Uh, your current mission. Uh, th there's the business side of, of your your project. Uh, do you guys have a larger mission, uh, or could you talk a little bit about? Uh, how the values that you have when you're building anything yeah i think um you know for us at Grad, we want to build something really big that can reach a lot of people and have a big impact a big societal impact so for us you know we want to really like empower every writer in the world um make it more productive and free them of um, to be more creative is, is what we believe. And of course, uh, along with it, um, you know, create a big, uh, a big business as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's also something, so. Cool. Yeah. I, I love that about giving people more opportunity to create and be more productive. I think those are, that link is kind of undervalued that you gain uh, not just free of being, you know, free of disease, but free of, in the, in the the liberty sense of freedom, you have this, uh, this empowering aspect to being more free via uh, these technological tools. Uh, and I think that that's a great answer to to, to hear you talk about uh, writers, especially especially because. Um, you know, I feel like, uh, like you've probably seen the AGI doomers, mm. like, uh, especially like, uh, because the first viral AG AI tools were things like Dolly, which, uh, you know, was said to, you know, put illustrators out of a job or mark or logo designers or, uh, do you have a, a reaction to that, uh, pessimism or, uh, cynicism i don't know what you'd call it yeah i think ultimately um people will be empowered by these tools i think i think there will be a point where some jobs do get replaced i yeah. do believe that but long term i'm optimistic in the sense that i think the people that really embrace these tools um are the ones that are like gonna stand out pretty much so yeah i'm more on the positive end where i think like people who embrace and adapt to these tools are the ones that are actually gonna thrive rather than like the people who are just on the pessimistic side and, and say like oh my you know my job's just gonna be taken away yeah. um so i think that that's, that's my opinion no i, I think i I'd, I'd agree with you yeah the uh the AGI pessimists, I think, will miss an opportunity uh, to build these, to one, be a part of building these tools, and two, being able to build with these tools, uh, because I think it's a force multiplier, if anything. And For sure. Uh, we see a lot of people, uh, like my, my one of my favorite examples is... Uh, uh, realtors creating copy for listings like it's this very repetitive thing that they do and 
AI tools have allowed them to use ChatGPT to make their copy, uh, you know, attractive to home buyers, and has freed them up to go scout more leads and to do other part of their jobs that are that require more of the human touch. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I've got a couple of friends that are in the real estate industry, and I've been trying to, uh, you know, lean them to use these these tools for nice. for their outreach for, for them to acquire leads and stuff and i think it'll only uh like you mentioned it's like a force multiplier on their productivity you know yeah. um they could focus less on the repetitive nuanced stuff that is boring yeah. and they could like you mentioned really focus on the human touch which is um they kind of have they could have more time to actually do more uh listings or, or show more houses and, and yeah. stuff like that so it'll make them double down on the actual human touch. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, thing I feel like a lot of people miss out with AI tools is that uh, once you learn how they work, like they get kind of dumber than you think, faster than you think. Like the you could reach the edge of some of these AI tools fairly quickly because... Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to give a little 101 to how these AI tools work or how the it's these like what's the difference between machine learning in general in a a large language model, right? Or or wherever you want to go around that question, right? Well, a large language model is like a general term uh, used to describe like these. This, this new paradigm of, of, of AI models that have been emerging with huge um, with huge like parameters so um, things like uh, you know now you know GPT-3 and now like GPT-4 so um, you know with large large language models was really like like a breakthrough in the industry um, I think and um, what's interesting is that you know I don't know, I can't remember exactly who said this, but um, someone mentioned like, which I thought was super interesting, where like Google, um, Google, the transformer came out of Google, which yeah. the, the transformer um, is like the paradigm pretty much of, of this uh, breakthrough. And it came out of Google, yet it so seems that Google is like, falling in in the race and they were the yeah. ones that you know came out of their lab and with for example the uh computer uh the personal computer revolution like the graphical user interface and like the mouse came out of xerox park mm -hmm. and um and they didn't take advantage of like actually productizing it and mm -hmm. putting it out into the world and that's when apple took advantage of that yeah. um so I, I think that's super interesting but it's not like IBM really uh, f fell too hard. <laughs> they, they're still doing okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but it does it does speak to something about research in general and technology, about uh, sometimes the people who create the knowledge aren't the best to apply it. Like you have, uh, like with uh, this transformer technology, uh, it might have been created by Google, uh, you know, funded by uh, you know an ad business essentially. Uh, they're not really selling uh, AI tools directly, but a lot of the, you know, whether it's Google Maps or Photos or the stuff they're doing with smartphones, uh, their product set and their feature set is so wide that they could afford to essentially lose that technology to open AI or, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, moving gears in those bigger companies where you know that's that's why startups have this the speed advantage right if they don't have the bureaucracy they don't have to worry about uh, uh 20 different teams in 10 different offices uh trying to coordinate where a startup you could you could really have the autonomy and the leverage to move things really quickly going through fat like this is your first startup i'm assuming yeah i uh, and you, I, I, we mentioned earlier that you've read Zero to One. Uh, so let's talk about other companies. What, um, 
what is it that you like about a company like OpenAI or or Google or who else do you look to in the industry that that's like more like you mentioned Apple earlier um, but could you expand on any of the these companies or founders specifically that that you really enjoy their work um well I really like Repla um, <laughs> good answer I, re- I really like Repla um I really like uh Amja nice I, I I hear a lot about his stuff and I really like the you know the way he thinks about the world and like where he's trying to take replit so yeah. um i think i also like uh synthesis a lot mm. uh synthesis is super interesting um i think like the education space and where it's heading is super interesting as well mm-hmm. um so uh his founder there the the founder there is also like interesting to to hear um ultimately like I think it's founders are really like trying to push the boundaries of um of like new technologies and like actually trying to bring them to the world yeah and it's something that especially with synthesis synth uh like the ed tech uh work that synthesis does and that we do with 100 days of code and are there content and uh just being a tool that's that's super easy to spin up uh uh, a, a developer environment uh, it seems like you know it connects to your background and that's that's interesting yeah you're mentioning uh, that nap bounty which was you know if anyone was to deserve it you were to, z- to deserve it because you, your experience and your uh, your interest in AI and uh, how many how much experience you've had with bounties already uh, but yeah there was a ton of applicants and that AI playground um yeah, it was like a three grand or something, or uh, it was the biggest bounty at at the time. Very close to uh, when we launched, and uh, or close after when we launched. Uh, but yeah, being able to work, we were talking about founders earlier, uh, and having that experience of being able to work with, you know, essentially someone with a lot of experience. You know, ran one of the biggest developer focused companies. Uh, in the world github uh yeah that uh, would be a great opportunity (laughs) yeah for sure and um something uh to mention there as well like you know uh it's not it wasn't just uh him like for example um my current uh co-founder we actually met through uh, a bounty. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and um, <laughs> have you heard our uh, our internal? Sa- it might be just internal saying, uh, but on our Slack channel, I think I could make this public. If not, I'll have to cut it. Uh, but I'll show you. Uh, P bounties. Oh, they changed it. But our our channel topic used to be uh, Tinder for startup founders. Interesting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> but I think the other one is better. Of, uh, yeah. Tinder like for it. startup founders because like it, it, it worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you essentially are married now. Exactly. Like, um, if uh, if I recall correctly, it's uh, from Y Combinator. They talk about how you should be more careful about choosing your co-founder than you are your wife. <laughs> my dad tells me that all the time <laughs> yeah. that it's harder to find a, like a good partner um than a good wife these days yeah so yeah business partners are because a lot in a lot of relationships uh you know uh, romantic relationships y- your money doesn't come up all the time and with a business partner you are constantly talking about money and c- constantly talking about value and uh yeah it's it could become a can of you could open that can of worms every day uh mm. how is your how long have you been working on this project now it's been about three months nice three months right what do you think is uh what do you think what do you let's start with the positive what do you what do you love about uh, uh starting a project like this uh I mean, there's there's a couple of things like learning is one of them. You know, yeah. I'm just learning so much both from um, on the technical side as well as from my co-founder. You know, yeah. he's got a great track record, and so 
Um, he's got a whole bunch of experience that I'm just like taking it all in. Nice. Um, and I think I'm enjoying is just, you know, um, just building uh, like this phase I think is like the most uh, exciting one or like the most nice. interesting one, like the actual zero to one product yeah. building stage. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been great. That's so cool. Do you think, how do you guys complement each other? So I'm all like on the technical side. He's all on the like non-technical side and he's got a great background in, uh, growth and marketing nice. and user acquisition and, uh, understanding, you know, the business side and, hmm. um, you know, all that stuff. And so we complement each other super well. That's cool. <laughs> and then I don't know if you noticed. Uh, Repl Hawaii shirt. Yeah. Is that, uh, do you guys sell that at nope. your store? No. This is Hack Week swag. Oh, sh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, all, all this art is done by, uh, Joe. He, he, he does, like, all the illustrations across the site. Mm. Uh, he's a resident artist. And, uh, yeah. So I was actually going to give this to you. So this is a, a Replic Creates shirt. So this is a recursive, we were talking about functional programming earlier. Oh yeah. So this is a literal robotic recursion. Oh nice. So it's a hand drawing itself. So That's super cool. Replic Creates, I think this one was on the store but it might not be on anymore. So it's um, somewhat limited. But nice. I'll, I'll let you take this one home with you. Oh awesome, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Thank Wear you. Wear well. Do us proud. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, let's get some final questions here. Uh, let me look at my notes real quick and see if I missed anything. Oh, this is actually really fun. Um, you want to do meme review? Meme review? Yeah. Like? AI meme review. Okay. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to go to... Like, are you, are you a Redditor? Not really. Like, here and there. All right, here's an AI one. <laughs> AI will replace programmers. Programmers who use AI will replace, replace programmers who don't. That's just facts. It is, yeah. Yeah. That goes to what we were saying, though. Like, there's always truth in the humor, and it makes it just... Every meme is just so much more funny when you explain it. <laughs> so, yeah. But that goes back to what we were talking about, of... Um, using AI as a force multiplier for sure yeah. and it's just natural selection of the people who don't use the better tools don't uh, produce the most value exactly yeah it, it's a tool at the end of the day all right let's let's find some more memes you know what I'm gonna instead of uh, uh, w what do we call it just hunting let's just go top meme hunting <laughs> let's go top <laughs> this month and what is it March <laughs> this one is actually really good. I think I saw this one. Please don't apply for a senior dev position if your GitHub looks like this. Please don't give advice on what someone's GitHub should look like if your GitHub looks <laughs> like this. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, there is a better version of this one. It was a Twitter meme. It was like, uh, you know who this guy is? I've seen him around. He's like, he kind of like created C++. Yeah. I've and seen uh, him this is his. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 I don't think he'd make the senior dev cut. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what have you got to show, man? Right. <laughs> Just created C++. <laughs> in one, in one commit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually true that's pretty good yeah it's like you gotta weed them out yeah yeah it's like, like yeah it is true <laughs> so like i think this is top meme of the the batch maybe i like it though <laughs> <laughs> um i actually like this one it's kind of too easy to dunk on lex friedman like i'm one to talk i'm like a 
a Z-list podcaster at this point. Right. Uh, so, like, I'm allowed to punch up. Uh, but Elon Musk, a small API change had a mass, have massive ramifications. The code stack is extremely brittle for no good reason. We'll ultimately need a complete rewrite. I think this was when the, they, like, borked the Twitter API. Remember mm. that? I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Lex is like, I'd love to help with the rewrite. And some guy's like, Lex, stop pretending you could code. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think it's a little, I don't think it's as pure as this one. Right. You know? Yeah, that one's good. This one's still good, though. Yeah, is there anything we've missed or that you've wanted to talk about that I haven't stumbled into as I've been rambling? And <laughs> No, I think... Um we covered some pretty interesting topics um i'm super excited about the future of Raplet and see where you guys take the platform so i'm a strong strong supporter thank you yeah uh well cool and if you guys want to check him out i'll put his links in the show notes and we'll have um uh his uh startup in there and then any other online uh, place where you could connect with him or this will be in the ask form too or uh, if you have a question leave him in the in the youtube comments and i'll try and get him to uh to answer it or if you have a question for for anyone on the bounty staff uh let us know uh i'm jesse i'm, I'm at contact at replit.com uh that's probably the easiest way to get to me um yeah man high fives thanks all right that was great dude thank you awesome <laughs>